right. Thanks, families, for joining us today. Um, our special guests are some um, folks from Alliance Health, and uh, Ashley Bath Mitchell and Deneen Hitton are going to share their uh, information about their program, and then we will have a time for questions. So, uh, Ms. Deneen, do you want to introduce yourself first, and then we'll go on to Ashley. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Deneen Hinton. I'm the Community Education Specialist at Alliance Health. I've been working at Alliance Health since the 2012 when we became Alliance. We were formerly known as the Durham Center. Um, Alliance is uh, the managed care organization here in Durham. We cover four counties. We cover Durham County, Wake County, Cumberland County, and Johnston County. My area of service is in Durham. And I have three other counterparts that service to Durham. My job is to educate the community. I'm a community person. So I go out and I do um, trainings, community trainings on mental health, substance use, and intellectual developmental disability services. Um, I encourage people to get connected if they are in need of supports and services. Um, I do a lot of anti-stigma um, uh, services, uh, I mean, presentations, um, trying to get people to debunk the stigma and get people to um, reach out and get the help that they need. Um, we have, at Alliance, we have a lot going on right now, um, particularly now since um, COVID-19, things are a little different, but that hasn't stopped us from providing the, the supports and services that we have been. Uh, we just do it a little differently now. Um, we service individuals from the age of four years old until adulthood, adult, adulthood. so you can, you know, up to um, 100 years old, we have um, supports for individuals, <laughs> um, no matter your age, at, at least, at, as long as you're at least four years old. And we have resources that we can um, share with folks who have young people younger than four. A lot of time it's Department of Social Services or Public Health Department of um, Durham Public Health so, um, agencies. So what we do is we contract with providers. Um, we have roughly in Durham over 200 providers that we actually pay to provide the services. We're like the umbrella. We're like the governing body um, of services. So we contract with the providers to provide outpatient therapy, in-home um, services for children. We call it intensive in-home. We have, um, and, and that's adult and children um, in home services, community support services. Um, I think I'm at med management. So if you need to see a doctor, we have right now is, is telehealth. Um, you can see a, a psychiatrist for your medications. We have outpatient substance use services. And we have this new service for our IDD um, population and that's our traumatic brain injury. Um, TBI waiver services. So that includes um, home services as well as the case management component to that service. So we have um, we have other things that we do. Um, as far as what children is concerned, primarily, I want to talk about our kids in crisis. Um, and, it, and, and when I go out and I do trainings and I talk about um, warning signs to recognize in young people that may be experiencing a mental health crisis. So we have this wonderful brochure I'd like to share with, um, and just send you a lot of them, Sydney. Um, uh, and it's watch for the warning signs. What do you watch for when a young person is um, behaving um, differently than, than, than normal? Um, their attitude may change, their sleep patterns may change, their thoughts may change, their, um, and it may be withdrawn. Um, what do you do? How do you approach young people? Um, one of the biggest things, um, service that we provide, or I actually am a mental health first aid trainer, and it's a youth mental health first aid trainer. We have adult mental health first aid trainers and youth. And that's a um, eight hour course that anyone can take. Anyone who's working, any adult who is working with a youth can take this training. And like I said, it's an eight-hour course that teaches individuals how to um, help someone, how to help a youth that is experiencing a mental health crisis, okay? how to recognize the signs, um, how to get them to the most appropriate help. And this could be, and we do a lot of the, the trainings in churches. Um, they have youth ministries, um, schools, um, different um, youth agencies such as Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts, 
Um, so we can go wherever you need us to go. We can go into you know, your facility, your um, agency and provide the training. There used to be a time when this was free, <laughs> but it's not anymore. But it's a, it's a very minimal cost of like $20. Now, now, since COVID, we are not able to go into a, uh, facilities. We actually, um, I'm in the middle, um, in the midst of training virtually. Now, as far as adults are concerned, we have programs that offer assistance, financial assistance. Yeah, independent, independent living, initiative. living initiative. Yes, thank you, Ashley. And that is a program that provides rental assistance and utilities assistance to prevent eviction and to prevent someone utilities from being turned off and we also have uh, funds to help the, with deposits first month's rent and deposits to get into an apartment along along with that we have um, supportive housing funds so say for instance you are part of um, we have we have these programs it's called dash program and and other agencies other public agency actually have these the, the same type of program, but they're just called something different. It, at the Alliance, it's called the DASH program. And once you qualify for a DASH program, you, be, you receive a um, housing voucher. Um, and that voucher allows you to go and look for a scattered housing apartment or house, and we will assist with the rent as long as you need us to. Um, a lot of times we encourage people to um, get sex what used to be called Section 8, now it's called Housing Choice Voucher from Durham Housing Authority. Once you receive that, then you can move out of, out of our program. But it's, it's supportive houses for people who are connected to services. They have to be receiving some type of services through Alliance Enhanced Services. So that's outpatient therapy or that's um, community support services or, or an ACT team. Um, that's a, a, a really good program to have. There are limited spots for that. Um, so not everyone will, will, will um, be able to receive that as long as we have openings or we have funds, we can actually um, bring people in to, to receive that service. We actually, I want to talk about our prices. Um, we contract with, um, we actually, we contract with Durham Recovery Response Center, which some people may know it as. This is Response Center. It's the Response Center now. Oh yeah, they were on with us last week. Okay, the Crutch, Crutchfield location. Oh, so you're familiar with them. Okay, it's over there near Durham Duke Regional. And uh, we contract with them for people to, if you're experiencing a crisis, it's a 24-hour walk-in um, facility. You, could, you can go and seek services if necessary. Oh, hi, I'm Ashley Bass Mitchell. I am the System Care Coordinator for Durham. Um, I have three other counterparts, as Denise mentioned. We have Johnston Wake and Cumberland that we cover, that Alliance covers as well. And I am the system of care for Durham. And so what that means is I'm kind of the bridge. I try to help provide services. A lot of people call me the email lady because I send out a lot of the <laughs> resources um, that's available within the community. I try to collaborate and build relationships and kind of share what's happening within throughout Durham um, as it relates to whatever is happening at that particular time. Currently it's the pandemic and then, you know, there's been and you know things as it relates to mental health, substance substance misuse and um intellectual development of disabilities, things of that nature. I also staff the Durham Community Collaborative. And so I help to kind of bring, I, I staff it in that along with their two chair, co-chairs, a family and agency co-chair because the collaborative is for everyone in Durham. And so all are welcome, especially, you know, we welcome youth to come, we welcome families to come, we welcome agencies, providers, everybody to come and participate in what's going on. And they have a set, um, a set goals that they're trying to accomplish each year, each year that changes. And so as we're closing June, we are also closing the fiscal year. So we'll come up with new goals for the, the next year. And we work together to kind of decide what is, you know, what's pressing this year, what's something we need to work on, how do we um, increase membership and things of that nature. Um, with the collaborative, we try to do ways to get um, community involvement um, and ways that we can engage and go out into the community for our quarterly events. Um, obviously, you know, during the times that we, we, we are currently under, things have been, it will be a little bit differently, but we still want to maintain engaged and with the community. Along with that, I help to put on my cross agency trainings and um, trainings in general to kind of offer, you know, connect with and partner with agencies and programs throughout the community to um, talk about the, diff the work that they're doing, answer questions, kind of put a public forum together for community and providers to be able to ask questions, gain understanding about how systems and 
things work and what they need to do to be able to kind of connect to the resources and systems that families are in need of and also how those systems providers and organization can connect to families as well what's the best way to get involved what are things that could be done better how can we you know better engage people what are what are what are some positive or you know feedback that we could take to you know to always do better um and be in better because a part of system of care the one of the main focuses of system of care is um using families for full partners and not only their own learning you know as they they grow into whatever their idea of what success looks like for their family to overcome the challenges that they're facing um so i kind of help with that and just kind of be that bridge to be able to support however um available i am in, my, in durham i am not the person that does care reviews but i assist with that when needed or jump in um in the other areas typically the system of care coordinator would be the person to do that but durham is unique as it has a it, his own person to be able to do that but we we work closely together and support and when people are in need of resources or um things of that nature they come to me and we tag team together Along with that, I offer flex funds to those to families that are in need. And flex funds is a program that is to get, is put out there for youth that are 21 and under in need of services to help support the goals that they're trying to comp accomplish in their their care. So if one of the goals is like social skills, and you know maybe they need to go out to the YMCA or go karate was a big thing last year or um, things like that in school, um, they may need support in getting a class or something for a school, um, flex funds can cover those different things as long as it helps that towards that youth to be able to achieve and accomplish their goal according to what um, their plan goals are. I mean, it is only for youth. It is not for like services for rent, rent utilities or anything like that. It's specifically for that youth mm -hmm. um, to be able to engage in a service um, and in a program that fits whatever their needs are. I work closely with the community. I kind of am involved in you know in collaboration when there's partnerships that need to kind of be made or i can lend a hand i, I work with other co um, community partners and they work with me so we all kind of come together to um a variety of events be it, be it a you know community health fair or um, community fair itself we've had we've done luncheons um at the nehemiah center to offer support where it relates to like different Medicaid, not Medicaid, but just anything that people are in need of, be it housing information. Um, you know, Medicaid transformation was a big thing last year. Um, raise the age, all of those different things that come about. Um, I'm kind of the person that helps put in, put those things together, offer facilitation services and how support however I can. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we did a lot. <laughs> so actually, um... I'm just going to go ahead and jump to questions because I, I thought of a few while you guys were introducing your, your programs and yourself. So have you seen an increase in service requests since COVID-19? Yes, I have. <laughs> 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 they, um, you know, families are just kind of trying to figure out what to do. We do have the Hope for NC line that um, is out there now and so that families can get to share um, the services that they need and so uh, families and and providers we have the hope for nc line which is a one eight five 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 eight seven three four six three number and that's for mental health um resiliency just support for anyone however there's also a hope for healers line as well which that number is nine one nine two two seven zero zero two which is for um, providers that are offering services and you know the frontline workers that are doing the work um, everybody's doing their part don't get me wrong I want to make sure I, I state that because I, I think it's important to say but you know for those frontline workers that are doing um, work every day the hospital care and things like that um, the janitors everybody whoever is doing it that line is specifically for them because you know they're doing that 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 work the work that they're doing and um, may get burned out and maybe in need of this different type of services and support. Um, so those two lines are available in the um, system of care coordinators are actually some of the people that are staffing that to be able to offer that support to those in need. Um, and then families, you know, you know what to do because some of those, the youth that are, that were in school had IEPs and different types of services that they were in need of, um, you know, trying to figure out how do I transition that now that they're at home? How do I right support the family now that we're at home out, you know, getting that information about food resources, getting information about, you know, housing and, you know, what, what's the law say right now about not being able to be convicted if you're in a hotel or if you're at home, like, what does that look like? So just kind of people feeling like they just need to know what their options are because it's a little bit different than what it was prior to the COVID pandemic. 
Yeah, I, I don't know how we would be functioning without the internet. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> like how people would be getting support and how we would do our work. I mean, I can't even think about doing this 30 years ago. No. Right. It would just be crazy. My work has slowed down considerably because I'm a community person. So my job is to be out in the community. I do a lot of health fairs, resource fairs. And so that has come to a complete halt. Um, so I'm, I'm not able to do that. But what we have started offering is just Zoom virtual trainings, um, mental health one-on-one -on -one trainings, substance use trainings, um, any, any topic you can think of. We're, if we don't have the um, information PowerPoint presentation, we will create one to make sure that people get, you know, still get the, the information and the resources that they need. But it's been really difficult uh, um, trying to be creative on yes. how to do the same work at home. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, because we are not a work from home agency either. Certainly. So yeah, all right. new to us. Um, so do you have uh, resources available in Spanish? Yes. Okay. Um, our training, well, I won't say um, the, the actual trainings that we provide. We don't. Um, we do have a Spanish version of mental health, youth mental health first aid. I'm not a facilitator, um, but we can, they're, they're nationally, they're, and <clears throat> the one positive thing about the virtual training is that we can reach out to people um, on a national level to do it. Before we couldn't, you know, have someone from Michigan to come down and do the training, but now we can just say, can you, if you're available, provide this training to someone in Durham? Which is, is a, which is a positive. So that's, we have Spanish um, versions of, of both actually trainings, but some of our other um, in-house presentations that we have created, we can do it if we have someone that can translate and that, that can actually do the training. Um, so as far as the resources uh, for housing, you have that available? We have Spanish. brochures, flyers, okay information all everything in Spanish. yeah everything every yeah all the all the the uh flyers and and different um brochures we have any and we have in spanish yes okay and then the last question i had um so all the programs that you talked about are those available in all of the was it four counties mm -hmm. yes okay yes. um so we'll make sure that we get your contact information posted um on our facebook page and then um i'll verify the help um numbers that you gave me just to make sure that i got there i right. was trying to find the fired um ashley do you have it i can just send it to you uh, i i have it i can send it to you cindy yeah anything electronically i can okay. convert yeah. and post yeah. to the facebook page too we have both spanish and english mm -hmm. so yeah i take all of that share it go ahead can you share it i have it I just, you want me to share my screen here am i able to share it i don't know yeah. if you can share it you should be able to now ashley Yes, there it there is. There it is. Perfect. And that's also in Spanish. If you have, do you have that version? That, um, I don't have the Spanish one. Okay, right I now. do. I have the. Uh, so hang on, I can make. Let me, uh, Denine, let me make you a. a oh, okay. Post as well, then you okay. can share. And then I'll stop sharing so that you can share the Spanish version. Okay. Oh. Mm hmm. Is it, can you zoom out? Me. There, there you go. go. Okay. Perfect. All right. Great. All right. Now go not do it. Stop sharing. Okay. All right.